Hey everybody, I'm Josh and welcome back to the Just The Driven YouTube channel. As you can see, we're starting today's video in the house because it is fairly early. It's currently just gone half past eight and in today's video we're going to do the first long journey in the M140i since owning the car and also since lockdown as well. I'm off to go visit a couple of friends, we're off to go see Shaq over at LSG Performance or Bolton Mods. We're going to take a look around his brand new Audi TT RS and fingers crossed we'll be able to get that car on the channel very soon then we're going to head over to Warrington to go and see Matt at Ultimate Customs and hopefully we're going to be speaking about the next chapter of what we're going to do with the M140i now along them lines in today's video we're going to talk about some draggy times that I've done in the M140i some draggy times which I missed out on the previous video purely because I didn't have a road to do it on we're going to talk about some new wheels that we're going to be getting for the car and we're also going to be speaking about a new wrap and future plans in terms of how we're going to achieve that 500 brake horsepower. So I'm just getting all my camera stuff together. I'm going to hop into the car. We're going to get onto the motorway. I'll show you a little bit of a time lapse of the beautiful M621 over the hills, over towards the northwest of England. And I'll catch up with you guys once we get to LSG Performance. Okay guys, so we've made it to Bolton and what an interesting place it is. It was a fairly nice drive over the tops to be fair, we go over the moors, past Manchester, all that sort of way. And it just reminded me that the majority of people on these roads cannot drive whatsoever. But apart from that, it's been a nice journey. We're gonna be pulling up to Shacks very shortly in the next five minutes or so. We'll take a look around his TTRS. We'll speak a little bit about plans for this car. Um, as we know, I got the BM3 from Shaq. And if you are thinking of getting a BM3, be it for, you know, 140, 240, 235, M2, M3, M4, whatever you've got, then use code JTD at the checkout on boltonmods.co.uk and you will get a free cable. Now the cable which I'm talking about is the cable you need to plug into your OBD port and then into your laptop as well. Um, so remember to put that code in at checkout to get your free cable. But I shall catch up with you guys once we're pulling up to LSG Performance. Okay guys, so as you can see we have arrived at LSG Performance or Lounge Street Garage. I'm just going to turn the camera around because you guys haven't seen my car in all that long to be fair, I haven't really shot many of the exterior shots anyway. So I'm just going to turn it around, have a look at mine, we'll have a look at Shaq's. We're also going to be doing a review on Shaq's in the very near future. We're going to be taking over to some B roads to go and give it a bit of a hoon. Um, and we'll talk about why Shaq's changed from the M2, the N55 engine, over to the TTRS that you see behind me. So part of the reason why I wanted to do this video is to talk about what's going to happen with this car more specifically in terms of the wrap in terms of the wheels what we're going to be doing with the engine in terms of remaps and stage one stage two stage two plus etc and sorry if you can hear any any background noise but we'll be heading over to ultimate custom to speak about this in further detail and whilst we're on the way over there um, i will speak to you about some draggy times which i have got from this car as well but the focus whilst we're here over at lounge street garage is shack's ttrs so if you didn't already guess from what i just said earlier on shack moved from the n55 m2 over to the TTRS which is a 2.5 five cylinder engine same as what's in the RS3 now Shaq has got his own reasons as to why he's changed I completely understand them but we'll speak about them a little bit further when we do a review of the car so if we just take a look around it's got the 20 inch wheels which I've heard are actually quite light and um, obviously we've got the LED lights at the front with his new number plate so his old number plate was EHSHS and now this one he's repping Lounge Street Garage which you can see just over there so this car is is APR stage one he is an APR dealer so if you want anything to do with APR be it on the MQB chassis the Golf R's S3's Cupra's or even the TTRS's go visit Shaq's website I'll put a link down in the description as well so this car is running 480 brake horsepower I'm not sure on the torque figures but from a stage one map that is absolutely insane so Shaq has done a little bit of customization with it it's had these bits blacked out just along the bottom there and also along the side it did have these bits blacked out as well but it might be going for a carbon option he's not entirely sure yet but it has got the sports exhaust as well which we'll listen to in a couple of minutes but just take a look around it it's a it's a lovely car 
I'm a big fan of the Mark III TT RS and considering they're not actually making another TT, this will be a rare car in years to come. The big thing that sets this car apart is the interior. We've got the quilted leather in here with the hard backs as you can see. We've got the digital display in the middle there and I'm a huge fan of this TTRS steering wheel. The start button on there as well. It just gives it almost a bit of a supercar sort of feel. But everything's quite minimalistic in here. I'm a huge fan of them digital screens there. I don't know what it is about digital screens but I just want them in my car to be honest. So back to the video then, I am on the way over to Ultimate Customs in Warrington to go and see Matt. Um, Shaq's given me a package to go and give to Matt and I believe it's a Res Delete, probably for an S3, a Cupra or a Golf R, something along them lines. Now onto the draggy times then, so a lot of you guys saw that video that I put out probably two or three weeks ago now and were laughing at the 0 to 60 times because they were so bad. First point, it was wet. This is a rear wheel drive car, I had traction control off. So this car was spinning in first, second, and when the BM3 stage one was on, in third as well. Now a lot of you guys are asking me for 100 to 200 times, because that shows the in-gear acceleration differences. And whilst, yes, you know, I completely agree with that, it's not always easy to get 100 to 200 kilometer per hour time on a normal road. So I took this car over to a private road with a good couple of friends of mine to go and see what this car could actually do. Now a stock M140i will do the 100 to 200 in between 10.5 and 11.5 seconds. That in itself is no slouch. However, with the BM3 Stage 1, I've got a varying amount of times. As I've already said in the previous video, I'm not here to do the best times that I could possibly do. If I do one, fantastic. If I don't, it's not going to be the end of the world. So to give you guys a bit of context, it was 20 degrees Celsius on this particular evening. I had a quarter of a tank of fuel and this car did the 100 to 200 in 8.7 seconds. I did also get an 8.46 seconds that was slightly invalid due to a minus 1.16% downslope. Now that was quite a mouthful to get out. A week or so later, it was 17 degrees Celsius. I had three quarters of a tank of fuel and the car also did an 8.9 and an 8.7 so this car is two seconds quicker 100 to 200 than a stock car now if that isn't proof that the bm3 stage one is an incredible piece of software that i don't know what is now with regards to the best times that this car could possibly do i reckon in the right temperature between one and five degrees or maybe three and six degrees something like that with a quarter of a tank of fuel or maybe even a little bit less this car will do an eight second at 100 to 200 which for a stage one m140i is damn quick so to finish speaking about draggy then so this car will do comfortably and back to back and reliably an 8.5 second 100 to 200 now compare that to the stop time of 10.5 to 11.5 and that's a huge difference between two and three seconds and just on the topic of stage two plus talking about future modifications to this car aside from all of the aesthetic stuff I'm in a bit of a predicament at the moment, so all I need to do to go stage 2 is to pay £50 to BM3 to lock the stage 2 OTS map and then I need to buy a downpipe, which will more than likely be a VRSF 4.5 inch DCAT downpipe. Once I've got that, I can then flash stage 2 onto this car, which will produce anything between 450 to 470 horsepower, and you're really hitting the limit of fueling and also turbo as well at that point. Now when we get to that point, I ideally want to get to 500 brake horsepower there's two ways that I can do this and I wanted to hear your opinions and your thoughts on what I should do down in the comment section below so option number one is to go for the Toyota A90 fuel pump now I say Toyota A90 it comes in all sorts of different cars so you probably can get one from a breakers if the car is in good condition now that will quite comfortably take this car above 500 brake horsepower um, without much else but you're looking at around 700 800 pounds for one of them Option number two is to go for an aftermarket Dodge fuel pump which flows a lot more than the stock one which is in this car at the moment and will very comfortably get to 500 brake horsepower. Now option number three which is something that I am tickling with at the moment is to stay at stage two but to go for an E30 or an E85 blend of fuel but going up to E85 or up to E30 should also see this car get 500 brake horsepower without having to invest into a fuel pump. 
So I wanted to hear your guys' thoughts down below. I know there's a couple of people who've done both routes, so if you are watching this video, let me know what you think I should do, because I'm, I'm in a bit of a predicament, as I say, I don't really know which route to go down. The fuel pump is the simplest option, but the E85 fuel does save quite a bit of money, over the short term anyway. So guys, we've been into Ultimate Customs and unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to take the camera in. Matt had to nip it out before I could get a chance to take it in. It's a fantastic place and if you don't know who they are, I'll put a link down in the description for you to go and have a look at. Essentially, they do all of the styling for VAG cars. We're also doing them for BMW, so I was speaking to them about dynamic indicators, carbon mirror caps, like genuine carbon mirror caps, genuine carbon diffusers, splitters, and that sort of thing. So keep an eye out for things like that coming on my channel soon because there's some very interesting things that Matt can get his hands on that I think will help the look come together for the car. Now, with respect to the wrap and what I'm actually going to be doing with it, I just want to say that this wrap was never done to be on the car for a, a long amount of time. I did it in the first couple of weeks of lockdown, it took me four days to do it. I bought loads of vinyl, cut it all myself, applied it all myself. Um, and although some people think it looks fantastic, I'm sort of 50-50 on it in the sense that it doesn't look uh, professional, if that makes sense. So I was kind of discussing what I could do with it and I've come out less certain about what I want to do than when I went in because Matt was throwing different options at me. Now, I do want to go for something that's going to stand out similar to this. Now, I could get a full car wrap. I don't know what colour it would go. I could also get a part car wrap similar to what I've done now but something that is more together and more of a full package, if that makes sense. Um, so I've got a couple of swatches or pictures of swatches that I can have a look at, um, just of different colours that we can play around with. I want to, if I'm going to do a part wrap, I want to work with the mineral grey, so the natural colour of this car is a grey colour. I kind of don't want it to go completely, which is why I'm airing on not going for a full car wrap, but I don't know. I've got some thinking to do. I might play around with Photoshop to try and work out what I want to do, but hey ho. So on the topic of wheels, now wheels are a big thing for me because A, they make the car look better, and B, they also can help with the driving dynamics of the car in terms of the way the car handles, and also acceleration if you're going for something that has um, a bit of a lower weight. Now in terms of the stock wheels that are on the car now, they are the ferret grey 18 inch wheels. The fronts weigh 10 and a half kilos, the rears weigh 11 kilos. So if I can get a wheel that reduces that weight by two kilos, I'll be a very, very happy man. Now I've been speaking to a particular company, I'm not gonna name at this point because I wanna keep the wheel choice on the down low a little bit. Um, and they've told me that they have three specific sets of wheels, which I very, very much like, that are race inspired and lightweight. Now, for the spec that I'm looking at, so I am going wider than the standard wheels, so it's going to be 8.5J, 18-inch ET38, so it's going to be a square setup, uh, probably with two, four, five tyres on there. Um, the wheels come in 8.25 kilos. In terms of the colour of the wheels that I'm going to be getting, I'm not entirely sure at the moment because it depends on whether I stick with this wrap or whether I go for a different one. If I stick with this one, I'm probably gonna go for black wheels because it will match. But if I get the new wrap, I'm probably gonna go for a light silver finish, like an aluminium, um, sort of hyper silver, shadow silver, that sort of color, um, to sort of contrast with the wrap. But all in all, it's been a very, very good day. It gives me a lot of food for thought. And with regards to the how this car has performed on the motorway, because this is the furthest I've taken the car in any one journey, believe it or not. I've only actually done a thousand miles in the car since picking it up. Um, but it's been averaging 45 miles to the gallon. Who thought that a 420 brake horsepower car could do 45 miles to the gallon on the motorway? I didn't. I thought I'd be getting 30, 35 or something like that. So it's been a very good day to be fair. We're lining up a review with Shaq's TTRS, which is a beautiful car. Uh, 480 brake horsepower, stage one APR car. Um, it's going to be very quick. He wants to take me out on some B roads um, to show me what he can really do. So that should make for a very good video. And if you want to see that, make sure you're subscribed. I've got a lot of thinking to do about what's going to happen with this car. I want to try and tie it in with a two year YouTube anniversary, which is in November. So I've got plenty of time to think about it. I've got plenty of time to have a look at swatches of wraps and different ideas, play around on Photoshop, all of that sort of stuff. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, remember to like it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments about what I should do with my car because 
I've got a lot of stuff to think about and maybe a bit of persuasive help from you guys would help me make a decision. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to go and follow me on social media for any of the other stuff that I'm going to be doing, go follow it down below down here. But I'll catch you in the next one.